What's that? I think it's a deer on the roof. <laughs> I'm Tom Burroughs. And uh, yeah, I've, I've uh, done sculpture in many forms. At times, I, I just did it in terms of social documentary, which was basically about squatting. And then I've done it in a uh, very solid, capsulized form that uh, it's easy for galleries to sell. I filled a fish the other day that was just so beautifully transparent. It was um, a green link on it. And I just was sitting and watching the the light come through the bones of the fish with this, you know, green tinge to it. It was extraordinarily beautiful. My main place where I live is right here on Hornby. I was invited here to help Gordon Payne build his house, and he thought I knew how to build a house because I put together this thing at the mud flats. Eventually, my house at the mud flats was burned down by the authorities. That was in 1972, and I'd actually begun to build my house here in 1971. I saw it happening. I came up here with a friend and we dropped ass and walked on the beach. I laid on a rock down below where my house is now and I sort of woke up peeking and I saw this beautiful curving tree that's since fallen down, but thought, Oh, oh my God, this is the place I want to build. I wasn't a very trained builder and my fingers were mashed. It was before screw guns, everything with hammers and hand saws. What really appealed to me about Hornby at that time, there was no building code and just the freedom to do what one wanted. People weren't looking at their places so much as a commodity, as a, but more as an experience. Maybe that's the best thing about building this house. Well, I wasn't encased in dealing with equity and mortgages and it was little Lulu's playhouse. It was yeah, it was it was play. It was the time of whole earth catalogue. That was the thing. It was back to back to the land, back to whatever. Um, and when I was living at the mud flats, you know, this, you know, people, people would come up apostles for domes and apostles for hyperbolic paraboloids. And, and like this guy talked to me about it and that, that got into my head. And, and I got very interested in, in Japanese farmhouses. So I, I took the hyperbolic paraboloid and the Japanese farmhouse and sort of crammed them together in my thought and came up with this. What gave me the confidence, I think, was uh, learning how to build as a squatter in the mudflats. And there, again, there, there was um, 
no real material. It was the same process. I could just go to the beach here and grab things. And I got the rights to pull down an old factory, which gave me my floor and my windows. And it was much the same as building a squatter shack. And I, I just like that quality of it. Freedom to build. <laughs> so I suppose in a way it is a sculpture. I'm not a very, what would you call, spiritual person or whatever, but I've always been repulsed by consumption. And, and like, commercial building materials, just why? It just, it still doesn't make sense to me. I, I, why use that stuff if you can find it elsewhere? And, you know, I, I kept records of everything, including the eight grand I paid for the land. This place cost me, initially cost me like $13,000. It's like what people paid to just have a place to live is, it's, it's horrendous. It's, it's, and you know, I, I suppose I, I put a, a lot more energy in of, you know, physical, but I, you know, I had that, I just didn't have cash. So what do you do? I basically put it together in a period of about three years. But you know, a lot of that was, you know, going away to work and then coming back. I mean, I'm, I'm still building it. And now it's falling down and I'm building. And, and, and parts of it are getting better. I mean, I've had doors that close now that never closed before. But, but I have other doors that closed and won't close now. So it's, uh, the house never finishes. Most of the stuff I did, I really was into it, but I always had to go away to find work. And I'm not a good carpenter. I'm a wood butcher, so you know, there's good carpenters on the island. I could never get a carpentry job. I've done ridiculous things to try to make money. <laughs> Borrowed money to buy a commercial fish boat, and that, that was a complete disaster. I mean, good God, you wonder why I work in polyester. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, making, yeah, making a living was not easy for me. But, you know, I'm, I've, I'm okay now. Yeah. And, it, and it's um, polyester's my crutch. It's, uh, it's a good one. It means I don't have to work in construction. Yeah. Maybe I'm just a parsimonious, but I'm not much interested in the things that uh, you can buy with money. Well, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm in that system. I have to be in terms of my relationship with, with the gallery that I have. Part of it is that um, I have a contract with them. I mean, I, I'm not promoting anything because they do it all for me. You know, like they are the only people that can market my work, which is fair enough by me because I can't market it. And it's a process that I can live with and it's fulfilling enough. And I probably will never achieve what I really want because I haven't yet, but yeah, you know, I've never had the perfect piece. But that's good. You know, the carrot. I mean, what else was I to do? I mean, work on construction, I'm, I'm too old. And even now, I'm getting beyond the, I, I, I'm, I'm getting beyond, you know, the endurance that needs to, one has to have to work in, uh, to, to do my studio process. I mean, why can't artists retire? You, know, you can't retire, you're an artist. Come on. And so, you know, so I'm training other people to do it. 
The process itself does it. I don't think a lot. I don't have a favorite color. I just set up a, a system of doing things and, and what comes out. I, you know, I've never got what I really wanted, but maybe that's the reason I keep doing it. It's allowed me to be insular in a way, which, which I like to be. And pretty well has allowed me to uh, organize my own time. In a way, I've took uh, that form of retirement so much that maybe uh, that's why I have to keep working because I retired too often before. I find it's just challenging to keep doing it at this point. What's kept me most interested is um, running into my assistant. She did her major paper, and I asked her, you know, who would she do it on? And, it, and she said, Eva has it. And I went, huh? I'm just astonished when someone else gets it. Everyone has their own connection. But when I find someone hits a, a certain rarefied place and, and how they get there. Of course, Yasmin was doing art history, but why she picked that piece of it. You know, Eva Hess was, she pushed sculpture about as far as it could go into such complete abstraction. So, yeah, so I, I basically said to, to Yasmin, I need an assistant, which I realized I did by that time. And she picks things up and she's a natural. Like, actually, she just astonished me and, like, started making her own resin pieces. And the resin pieces are in that Eva Hess realm. What is, what is art? I mean, um, Ian Baxter put out these pins way, way, way back in uh, 1965, but the pin said, art is all over.